Apologize for my absence last week. My cat got in a fight and almost died. She's doing a lot better. Here she is. And let's get on with the video. I thank you for being here. I love you all and welcome. So windy right now, stormy, and just yesterday it was 100 degrees. I recently mentioned in a video, something in the comments at least, about making a community possibly on my land, and I do want to do that, but I would rather do it somewhere else. I'd rather start fresh, a fresh piece of land, a fresh piece of land. <laughs> my cat is doing better. She wants to let everyone know. Thank you for the prayers. And this area where I live is just rough. Minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter, and up to 105 in the summer. Today I want to talk about breweries. I used to love beer. I did most of my drinking before I was 21. But these days I have been following the Dr. Gundry protocol and avoid wheat. Even if I drank, it might be once a year on some occasion. Maybe not even that. And avoiding wheat, I'd probably drink wine. My favorite wine is port. Tawny port. Yeah. So, breweries. Through my research, I've come across hundreds of breweries. We've discussed some in past videos. I would often remark how ridiculous it is to have a brewery any more than three stories tall. Even three is excessive, pre-1900s, but I've put together a nice little showcase and I want to show that. Sorry if the wind is raging, it's not like I control the portal, but I want to open up with a little San Francisco, just a little recap. A fresh, young city, established in 1849 because of a gold rush, yet the gold wasn't even in San Francisco. So, wrap your head around that. It was well over 30 miles away. And before that, we're told there were Spanish establishments. And we have a star fort under the Golden Gate Bridge. And the population is said to be a thousand people in 1848. And then the gold rush. And people start arriving. Here's a picture in 1851. So in 1848, there were a thousand people, and in 1851, it looks like this. Very modest, still, but also very advanced. Looking seasoned, not looking new at all. They should be so new. And the roads are so perfect, even though we can't see them in this picture, we can see how everything is laid out nice and tidy, just like modern times. And a lot of shine, a lot of glistening coming off of these boats. Really strange. And again, you see my point. This doesn't look new. It looks at least 50 years old. This metal roof down here, rusted. I don't know. Just not looking like three or four years of weathering. That's all. And from this picture, we'll now go 20 years forward. And mind you, this one, before we look at the next one, is just a little slice. Of course it goes on in both directions and behind us. In 1859, they discover silver, and entrepreneurs sought to capitalize on the wealth generated by the gold rush. And in 1878, we go from something like this, which is already suspicious in my opinion, to something like this. And let's zoom in and be nice and certain of what I'm talking about. A little over 20 years and the city looks like this. Notice they didn't show this photo like they usually do. In the past, this photo 
was one of the first few they would show on this website. And this website changes constantly. But it doesn't matter. Most of us have what we need saved. And this is anomaly number one. How do you do this in 20 years? Did they come here to mine gold? Which again was over 20 miles away. Or was this city already here? Come on. 20 years? And looking like anything but a gold rush boomtown. Looking like something much older. So this is the first anomaly. Was this here? Or was this actually built in 20 years? Like this. As always, I don't want to tell you what to think. You tell me. But now I'll move on to the next anomaly. All that that you just saw is mostly wiped out. We are told in the 1906 earthquake and fire. Here is a view of San Francisco's ruins taken from a balloon. There we go. The joys of being in a balloon. So there we are. Just wiped clean. Where is all the debris? Like it's all been washed clean. So is this real? Look, all the way back here. I don't know. Because we're told they completely rebuilt the city. In time for the 1915 Panama Pacific Expo, or the World's Fair. And by the time this World's Fair takes place in 1915, we have an exquisite city once again. How can it be? How could they have built it all in 20 years and then it all burns? And then they rebuild it all in 10 years? So, did it really burn? This is a mystery. Is this a real picture? Or is this just a model or something? What makes the most sense is that it looked like this. What we're told is 1878. What makes the most sense is that all this was here, and in fact, there was no fire. The fire photos and video are all staged. That's what makes the most sense. Because again, you can't build this in 20 years, as we are told. And if most of the downtown is burnt out, you can't rebuild it in 10 years. And this whole region gets absolutely cooked, as you see here. I don't know, this photo looks real, but so does this one. So I'll leave it there, and we'll zoom in a little closer. We'll approach this from the angle of the brewery. Okay, I hope this segment will replace another segment that I don't like. This will be a segment on beer. Now, I think humans have always liked beer, beginning with its introduction. But when was it really introduced? Of course, they'll have an elaborate history on wine and beer. And whatever, it may be just as they say. We're told in the Bible they would keep their wine in wineskin? I'm not sure because it says bottles now. But nonetheless, all cultures having alcoholic beverage in their history. Except the Mormons. Or is that really true? Here recently somebody shared a picture of the Old Salt Lake City Brewing Company. I've been to the Old Salt Lake City Brewing Company, but by the time I got there it was just one building, simply one of these sections, and all the upper floors and ornamentation had been removed. The Salt Lake Brewing Company. So was alcohol important to the early Mormon settlers? I mean, this is early. There's not even a road yet. Just a dirt road. A worthless landscaping job here. Looking like it's been raining for a hundred years. Totally unkept. This is the beginning of Salt Lake City within the first 30 years. And this building already has windows boarded up, entryways blocked up, and showing signs that the level of the building at one point was not slanting. We can see weathering here. This is just unbelievable. Again, for a people we are told trekked across the country to practice their ways, and part of their ways are not drinking, and yet this? Not just a brewery. Not something like this modest saloon. Okay, maybe we could swallow such a thing in early Salt Lake City. But this? A castle? 
One, two, three, four, five, six stories. And there is simply no doubt. There is no question anymore. This is the old world. Salt Lake City is one of the last cities to be built in the nation. San Francisco right behind it. And yet the earliest photos we see are packed with castles and turned into stupid things like breweries, prisons, asylums, amusement parks. And if there were too many buildings to justify holding a world's fair and then demolishing everything. This makes me sick and excited at the same time. Very strange. Sick that this has been hidden from the masses, certainly from all the people in Salt Lake City. While doing my research today, I stumbled upon this old picture of a hospital that was up in the avenues just above Salt Lake City. At the time, there was no homes around it, and I had just moved to Salt Lake City and found myself up here. And it was one of the first experiences in my new adult life, I would have been about 20, maybe 21, that I felt this strange feeling that has led to my research today. This feeling that this didn't belong. I was sitting here hanging out with a couple friends, and they told me this was a haunted hospital. It was completely abandoned at the time. And maybe because they were from here and they were used to their surroundings, it didn't seem unusual to them. I spent the latter part of my youth growing up in a suburb out of Phoenix, Arizona. And when I saw this, I thought castle. And it made no sense that this castle was an abandoned hospital. And teenagers and such would come up here to experience or hope to experience some kind of paranormal activity. It was said you could see people in the windows. And by the time I'd seen this building, there was no need for it anymore. It was abandoned and has since been torn down and is surrounded by thousands of homes. I can barely remember where it was. And now when we look at this brewery, almost just as glorious as this hospital, but just no need or reason for a people fleeing persecution to arrive and build castles. It's enough that their temple looks like a castle, glorious fairy tale castle. And then down the street, we have the city hall or the city building, and it's a castle, just a beautiful, excessive castle to be building in your first 30 years. And how, again, the amount of detail and materials the perfect layout of the roads that today would take heavy equipment to lay out. Large graders, even having curb and gutter with underground drainage power. So the pictures they give us are absolutely primitive when they're trying to portray the early settlers of Salt Lake City. You would never see this picture, for example, in Wikipedia. Oh, the early Mormons settled Salt Lake City and built a brewery like a castle. I mean, that would never fit in. It doesn't work, and yet here it is. So this led me on a little tangent. Within 20 minutes, I had looked at a couple hundred breweries all over the country, not saving anything, just surfing through, digesting, processing. And then I decided to hit record, try to work backwards. Here we are in Texas, San Antonio, the original brewery, Antiquatec. 1883. Now here, another beautiful building. I love our research, or at least mine, what I'm allowed to do, and that is look at history through a different perspective. And it's not going to be in classical textbooks or official mainstream narratives that we're going to find the truth. And even here today, I get to explore the old world through breweries. And it is nothing but searching for old breweries that will lead me to all this repurposed old world architecture. And I love these round buildings. And here, as if all of this wasn't enough, just as we always see in the history, by 1894 they need to build what seems like a third one. 1894, a new brew house was constructed. The building was designed by Chicago architect August Maritzen in the Second Empire style. Come on. 
how many stories and archways and windows and ornamentation do you need for a brewery? Why must a brewery look like a castle or some kind of train depot just over the top? Why must an architect design a brewery? In 1894, Texas. Is this the Texas that comes to mind when you think of Texas? What's going on here? San Antonio. Just like we just experienced in Salt Lake City. Castle breweries. Surely nothing could be greater than that. Here we have the Pearl Brewing Company in San Antonio. This could be anything of the old world. What did people think in this time period? How did they pull it off? I think in this time period you did not question anything, or you would find yourself in an asylum real quick. Now let's look at the old Pabst. Pabst Blue Ribbon. A very American beer. An old classic, and no wonder. They really got a jump start. Again, some sort of castle. I mean, the old world, if we were to believe the stories they tell us, would make us seem so impoverished and ghetto today. All of our buildings are just dumps, absolute eyesores today. And, of course, nobody would ever build a brewery like this. Only inherit. 118 years they brewed in this castle. Frankly, I would expect more of the beer after seeing their manufacturing facility. Really pretty crappy beer. And mind you, this is just San Antonio. And here we can see this building has still survived. All of it. Looking absolutely beautiful. Still. Timeless. And here we are in Spokane, Washington. Very similar looking like this town is completely abandoned and this well-constructed building still stands. Seen here in 1920, it's now being used as office space. And here we see what looks like a little city in 1880. What's going on here in 1880? Streets of mud, mud flooded windows, they've had to build stairs going up to the front door couple controller characters here. Super ornamentation. And what is this? Well, this little picture says Brew House Yard, 1880. Ah, of course. The Brew House Yard. And whose brew house is this? None other than Anheuser-Busch. And we can see it changes. They knock down the super beautiful parts very quickly. We still see some amazing features here. This clock tower, very important as part of your Budweiser factory. It's very interesting. Way too many windows, way too many floors. And mind-blowing, look at this one. Unbelievable. Look at this old picture. So here we have trains. All of these little tunnels, including this one in the foreground, seem to have train access. What a mind-blowing city. So you can see everything is castle-esque. And look at this. Was this really meant to pump out smoke? I don't think so. This seems to have had another purpose. Just a massive, massive obelisk. And what city is this? Let's just play name this city in 1880. And clearly, going back further than that, this is St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, home of one of the world's fairs that we've looked at. Unbelievable. And how about one more? Here, that same picture, but sketched out, kind of a rendering. And there you go. This is how Budweiser made it to the top, by inheriting real estate. Who couldn't succeed with a jump start like this? Are you kidding me? The Anheuser-Busch Power Plant and Brew House. There you go. Just a little monopoly on beer and power. And remember, power really isn't even common at this point yet, but they don't want us to consider that. So this is absolutely fun, looking at history through the brew house. Here's the history of Ham's beer. Now, I don't give a shit about the history of Ham's beer, but I am absolutely 
interested at what the history has to offer us in the truth about our true history. This is an insult to the human race. Hams, brewery, mud flooded, super castle, 200 foot pole? Come on. Hams? Some of the worst beer ever? Yes. Hams beer? Harkening back to St. Paul, Minnesota. Again, Minnesota, snowy as all hell. You might get five months of good building season. And why, in God's good name, would the top half of this building be necessary for a brewery in 1905? God, I'm having a ball. Any old world building in this search in which I've purposely misspelled that helps is revealing much more than I expected. Here, the Malt and Brewing Company. I don't even care where it is. Somewhere in America. The Malt and Brewing Castle. And we'll do one more. Pabst Blue Ribbon out of Milwaukee. Here we go. Unbelievable. Horse and buggy, what we would call the beginning. Pre-industrial era, we are told. And this is how Pabst Blue Ribbon decided to design their factory. Fit for the queen. One, two, three buildings for these people. Each horse can carry maybe 30 kegs, 30 wooden kegs of beer out of here. What and who do they think we are? How could they have continued to push this narrative? Well, really they don't. Most people will never see this or anything that I showed today. So that is perfectly it. I thank you so much for joining me today. Do have a blessed day. I love you all, and I'll see you next week.